Hi guys, Gary here for GenVFX. Welcome back to the tutorial. Um, and this one is a bit of a special one because on, on the multi-resolution tutorial that um, I did previously, I had some questions from a gentleman who goes by the name Spitting Game. And that's his YouTube channel. And basically he's building himself a computer game character from scratch at the moment. I'd definitely recommend going to have a look. It's really interesting. And um, he asked me, basically, how would I take the high-resolution mapping from the multi-resolution and apply it back to the low resolution model. And I sort of said, well, I wouldn't necessarily do that really because there's a lot of information, a lot of geometric information to pass back. I mean, what you could do is put the low res, I didn't say it at the time, but what you could have done is put the low res model and try and shrink wrap it over it, but it wouldn't have given you the pinpoint detail. So what I really then wanted, went on to explain was that a displacement map is probably the way to go forward. So take the physical detail out of the mesh as a texture, so you bake it out of a texture, and then apply it back to the object. And that kind of got me on the right sort of lines as to what he wanted. And then I showed him, uh, a, not a tutorial, but um, an image where someone had actually was driving displacements based on the position of joints and, 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 and shapes of the face. And um, his response was, that's great, thank you very much. Uh, but what he did say was, um, I'm a very visual person. If you did it as a tutorial, uh, that would be quite helpful. So here we are. So spitting game, this one, my friend, is for you. And I hope you like it. So what we're going to do is, I know I normally start with this lovely little box and this camera and this light. Ooh, ooh lovely and default. Uh, but today I'm actually going to open something I've already, um, already done. Uh, which in this instance, I'm not going to say the default. Uh, in this instance, it's it's a head that I have had lying around for a while, and I went in and just made a few alterations, um, cleaned up the verts, and UV'd it. So it, it's currently got a subdivision surface on it, but I'll just turn that off for the sake of argument, and then if I just go and stick on wireframe so you can see what I mean. So what we have here is a nice, simple base mesh. We're going to UV editing. And then we select this object, go into edit mode, and let's select all those faces. And you'll see here, there you go, they're all sorted out and in the right places. So we've got this side of the face here. And if I just select that so we can see things happening on the same side. So whatever is on here is on the left hand side of the face. And whatever I grab here is on the right hand side of the face, and all of that malarkey. It's really, it just, it, it is nice. And I, what, what I've done spe more specifically, let's go back to the modeling tab, is I wanted to be sure that the actual rings that make up the quad patches for the mouth and for the eye were just a, a bit more accurate. Um, as I say, the older model had um, had a couple of had a couple of triangles here or there, let's say, uh, but I, I've got rid of them. Um, and and as I say, it's it's fit for purpose, and that's that's all we've got to worry about right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first thing first, I'm going to get this model up again, and I'm going to create some shape keys. Because what I want to do is I'm going to lift up this corner of the mouth, and then that corner of the mouth, and then lift up this eyebrow, and lift up this eyebrow, and save them as shape keys. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive some texture maps using the shape keys. And we've talked about drivers before, so I will cover it again very, very, very briefly. But... I'm going to be using a method that I saw recently, which I didn't realize you could do, which makes creating simple expressions that take values between simple numbers like 0 to 1 makes them incredibly easy. It's literally like copy-paste, and I love that. So let's start off with our shape keys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to create some shape keys. Now, obviously, first of all, when you create shape keys, if you try to do an edit mode, you'll notice there is no little highlighty on the shape key button. You create them in object mode, but you put alterations on them in edit mode. So here we go, let's click first, and the first shape key, you'll see there is called basis. Now that one is like, if you if you use Maya, that is your uh, blend shape base object. So it's almost like, this is our default object. So that, you leave that, that's it, just don't change it. And then you click again, and then you start to get keys. So what these are, are the ones that you can change. So I'm gonna key one, and let's call this let's call this L E B up left eyebrow up. Okay, let's click it again, and let's change the one to right eyebrow up. So L I R E B up. Okay, I'm going to click it again, and we'll call this L M T up for left mouth up, and we'll click it again here, and we're going to go R M T up. So now we've got L B L B up. Rub up, limit up, 
and remit up. So left eyebrow, right eyebrow, left mouth and right mouth. And here now we're going to go into edit mode. And I'm going to very quickly save this as, and I'm going to call it, uh, the last one I've been using, but the one that I built to suggest this are called Headley. I thought I was so clever. I'm just going to call this Manhead. I just can't, I can't be bothered to make it a new Headley. So let's call this Manhead underscore one blend. Save that. Good. So now we're going to edit mode. Let's go to vertex, vertex as. And I'm going to go on to make sure I'm on left EB up. So left eyebrow. So let's raise the left eyebrow. Now what I can do is I pick one, two, three. And in theory, I can just lift those up like that. But you'll notice there's absolutely no contiguation, no contiguation, no continuity of any kind by just pulling that up. I need to pull around a few more of those. So I'm going to press O. And O gives you a fall off. It's proportional fall off. So if I now lift this up now, you'll see a lot of stuff moving around. Now, obviously, that's a little bit too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to press O. And I'm going to lift this up, and you'll see there's a circle around it. And I'm going to press. Now I'm using a tablet. If you're using a mouse for this, you can make the you can use the wheel up and down to make the area smaller that's being affected. But if you are using a tablet, you use page up and page down on the keyboard, which is actually quite good. So let's just push this up to here, slightly sardonic looking. And let's go to basis. There we go. So that's back to normal. And then right, right up now. We'll do the same thing for right up. Let's uh, right up and then just go right. There we go. Let's just have a look. Left up, right up. He's like a cheeky fella. What a cheeky chappy. And then we're going to go down here and we're going to go to left mouth up. And I'm going to select all of them. And it's just those. Yes, good. And I'm going to press, I'm going to push up, but I'm going to take the O value, proportional value, I'm going to lift that slightly, like this. And you'll notice we've got this kind of weird sort of thing. Now what I can do here is I can change the type of the actual, if you don't click off it, you can change the type of your proportional fall off. So the sphere's not quite right, root's not quite right, Inverse square, no. Uh, sharp. Now, oddly enough, sharp is exactly what you want. And while we're still in this, I can shift this up a little bit higher. And then also, I can increase the proportional amount. So I'm lifting it up. I'm trying to get as far as I can towards the mouth without actually going into the mouth. And I'm going to move it out a little bit. So it just feels a little bit more like a smile on that side. So we've got... So let's just now think about where that is in space. It's about there. So if I go to right up, and I'm going to select these ones. To about here. Yeah, it's gone smooth. So let's change that to sharp. Move it out just a little bit. A wee bit. And if we go back here to object mode, now I've done that. Each one of these now has got active control on the value. So we can go, I'll push right mouth up, left mouth up, and then right eyebrow up, and then left eyebrow up. There you go. So right now I've just pushed all those four keys up, and he's got a slightly ho -ho, sort of smile. Uh, or we could do something like this. What you can also do, by the way, is you can change the minimum range to minus one. So you can actually push it down if you want to, which is quite useful. It doesn't help us in this scenario much, but we'll just set that back to zero. And there you go, we've got zero to one. That's the thing, we have values that go from zero to one. And just for speed, that's really gonna help us. So I'm just gonna set all these back to zero. There we go. Uh, there we go, oh, well, which one's still up? There we go, right mouth up, let's send it back to zero. And now we're gonna do something which is uh, well, let's just hope this works. I'm going to very quickly create two texture maps, but I'm going to do it in here with the texture paint, which we have also discussed in a previous tutorial. So please feel free to go back and check that out. In fact, while you're at it, subscribe. Just subscribe. That way you get all of them. And this is the 20th. I'll be doing this 20 weeks now. That's quite. I'm, I'm quite pleased. Or is it 21? I think I may have missed one week. Maybe. Not sure. Anyway, forget that. Let's go over here to texture paint. And there you go. For some reason, we've got a horrible, horrible, horrible purple head. But that's okay. I can live with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new 
texture and I'm going to call it um, left eye brow up disp okay so it's a displacement I'm going to make it 2048 by 2048 and this is the trick I'm going to go into the color I'm going to set the value to 0.5 so we get a full sheet of mere level gray and the reason for that is it's difficult to do displacements that go in and out if you start with black so the best thing to do is always set your first displacement color that you're working onto uh, being 50 percent of whatever whatever the full luminance and value is that way you can then say right this is my ground this is where this is the floor or this is the skin point it's a 0.5 and then whenever a value goes lower it will dip in and whenever a value goes higher it will come up so that's your offset point and that's that's quite important to always do that when you're doing displacements even better if you're using rgb values you can then do vector based displacement oh but i haven't got time to go into all that okay so i'm going to just create this and i'm going to go boom there you go and now you can see what we've got here is a nice big tile there we go so i want to paint onto this but as you can see biggest problem is i'm not in object mode here i need to be in edit mode and then if we select all of those you can now see on here we have our skin sitting on top of the texture image so i don't need to put it in here to see it i could if i wanted to but i'm going to work just in here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to start here with the texture brush i'm going to say right this is my right sorry left brow up so this is where it's going to be so it's roughly going to be let's see where the nose point is it's that one there is that one there so it's going to be it's going to be here so i'm going to be working in this area here and i'm going to very quickly and uh, not going to worry too much about how perfect or how good it is or how bad it is we're just going to work here let's just go f oops take that out if we can stop go that back right so let's get our brush press f to change the radius and i'm also going to go down here and i'm going to change the strength just a little bit lower maybe not quite that low and i'm going to paint in on this line here a line like this just like that and let's just fill that up and then let's put another one as well up there and let's put another one above that as well yeah why not i'm going to take a little bit further over as if we go towards the middle like that okay i'm now going to change this to a black and i'm going to put some little bit of black here in between and don't worry, I promise you, I'm going to make this look a lot better than it is, because at the moment it looks like he's got a zebra sticking above his eye. That's not what is. That's not what. We're, that's not the point of this. What we do now is I've just changed this over to a blur brush, and I'm going to make the radius a little bit bigger. Just press F so we can see it. There you go. And I'm going to soften off the edges here. Let's just do that here, and then do that here, and maybe we'll do a little bit of softening in the in the grooves. Like this there we go and that way it just it's just a little bit more subtle and it'll feel a little bit less like it's a splat of a of a, of a displacement even though it kind of is a bit of a splat of a displacement so i've got that and i'm going to leave that exactly where it is i know it'll work at least i hope it'll work if i go down here and let's go to texture paint can't see it for some reason a single image is what we need so what we're going to do is we're going to click on there we go and now you can see there it is so that is our left brow up dot dsp and also we don't need to do one for the right because as you may have noticed this is perfectly mirrored down the middle so we can use that same one and change the texture coordinate space and it'll be on the other side which is very useful so now let's do this again and let's create a new one don't worry everything's fine yeah I'm just going to save this. Oh, and also what I'm going to do very quickly is I'm going to go, when I save, I'm going to automatically pack it into the dot blend. So what happens, that means is that any picture or image that I've created here, I don't have to go save as and store it somewhere else. I can just go pack. And what that does is that basically stores it as an integral part of the scene. So if you ever want to send something up to a render farm, that generally is how Blender files are sent. They're sent as a packed file. So everything just lives in them. Now, that's this image. I'm now going to create a brand new one. So what we're going to do is we're going to go new. Here we go. And we're going to go with L M T up. Now everything else is set for the last time you did it. So just click okay. 
and then we'll go here and we'll do this and we'll go the L and T up and I'll stick it on wireframe as well on there just so we can see but fundamentally what we're going to be doing is painting like this and that you can see oh it's massive oh it's massive so let's go down here and let's change this to a white okay and we're going to see that we'll see what's happening in here anyway but I'm going to just paint in here a little bit of a little bit of a crease like this there you go and I'm also going to do another one here, like this, and maybe a little bit more. I say it's not. I'm, I'm not. I'm going for making it work here rather than making it perfect. So let's go back to the brush and let's take this and make it the black one, and then let's just do this. Here we go. So that's dipping it in. And then back to our soft brush and let's make it bigger and let's blur these so they're just indicative of shape. There you go. So you can see this kind of that's kind of that's kind of right. And maybe if just why as well just just now while I'm at it and just go here and just very quickly put another line. It's very small, isn't it? Right, and another line just a little bit up there maybe maybe no do you know what actually that wouldn't that's not right I've just gone against everything I've just said so we're just gonna get rid of that I'm gonna leave that bit in as well just just because I can so there we are and we've now got two images so let's just go image we'll go pack and then just very quickly go file and we go save just external data is yep pack it in save so those all saved in there now let's go back now to our modeling hey dude and if we go back over here, my left brow is up, my right brow is up, my left mouth is up, my right mouth is up. I'm a cool dude. I'm a cool dude. <laughs> oh, it's been a long day. So here we go. Here is our shading. Uh, here is our head, sorry. And now what we're going to do is going to start working on the shading. Now, there is a principal shader on this guy's head. It's uh, not perfect. It's not meant to be. Not worried about that so much, but what I am going to do is I'm going to change this to Scene Lights and World. In fact, I'm going to change it just to Scene Lights. Yeah, oh, let's, but let's change what we've got going on in the Scene World. I don't particularly want this one. I'm going to have something a little bit more... Ooh, let's go for this one. Yeah, that's better. And I think this one... Is this one? You can't see in this one. There's one. One of these has got a dog. I think it's that one. Yeah, I can just about see the dog. If I'm looking just there, can't see it anyway. anyway. So I digress. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start by putting in our displacement. And what I'm going to do very quickly is I'm going to change this to rendered, and then you'll notice I'm going to change this to cycles. And the reason for that is because I want to really see what this is doing properly. So let's go back here and let's turn back on our subdivision because we can. And let's make sure this has got the scene world in there. There we go. So it's a little bit of a little bit of lighting on his face. In fact, this is where we see the dog. Where is he? There he is. Oh, he's lovely. Thank you, Blender, for my lovely Blender Labrador. Uh, beat Suzanne into a cocked hat, if I don't say mind saying so myself. So here we go. There's our bloke. And now what we've got here is, if we go back to our things here, is we've got our values that we can shift. And you'll see as I do all of these. You'll see them changing in here. There you go. His eyebrows are up. And both his mouth points are up. Now, brilliantly for us, as I said, these values are all set to 0 and 1. And they can be used as drivers for the displacement. So let's pop the displacement in, shall we? Let's go to our shader first of all and move right way down to the bottom. And in the settings, we're going to pop this down. And where it says bump only, we're going to change that to displacement and bump. We want them both. We need those bad boys. So let's move this over here. And for some reason, I have a normal map, which I didn't know that, that was connected. So I'm going to get rid of that. There we go. Not necessary. Uh, we will need that normal map at some point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an image. OK, so let's go texture. I want an image texture. And thankfully for us, we don't need to move out and look for anything. We just go here and we go left, EB, up. OK, now if I was to put that into the color, or into the surface you can see there it is 
beautiful look at that oh i tell you i tell you what, I, I i i should have this for a job you know that'd be a better idea wouldn't it um i'm going to put that back into there there we go what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put this into the displacement. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to go converter, and I'm going to, not converter vector, sorry, I'm going to go to displacement. I'm going to take the color, I'm going to drop it into the height, and I'm going to displacement into the displacement. And all of a sudden, everything goes horribly wrong. And the reason for that is, is basically is, is manifold. Uh, and we get that scale to a lot smaller value. Oh, oh my word. I have to say, he looks... That is a terrified 3D model. It's scared. It's absolutely bricking it. I don't blame him. Um, you'll notice that we now have everything popping in a bit. And that's because the middle level is set to 0.5. Whoops, set from there. Our middle level is already set to, as you remember, is set. To, now we look just tired. Our middle level should be set. Our middle level on our, on our thing was actually set to grey. But we have to just adjust this now so that we can get that mid-level so it gets to a point where it actually matches the line of the geometry. There you go. So it should be 0.25. There you go. That's right. So now what we got, what that means is we have geometry going in and geometry sticking out. So that is dipping. You can, there you go. You can see now if I pull in here, you can see it's just dipping in through the orange line. So that is where the black is in the displacement map. And this bit here is where the white is in the displacement map. And yes, it looks a bit pants, partly because it's too high. Change it to zero. Yes, it is. Thought so. 0.1. There we go. Is 0.1 enough? Should we try something at 0.05? Yeah, that's that's nice. That that I mean, it's definitely obvious. You can see it. Now, what we need to do is we need to find a way of driving this so that it goes into here. By the way, what I'm also going to do before I want to think about it, let's just move this out of the way. Seriously out of the way. Is I am going to put the texture coordinate uh, stuff onto this that we need, which is the mapping and the uh, connection to the UVs. So I'm going to press Control T on that one. It builds them for me because I've got Nodal Wrangler on, which everybody should have just as default because it's just the quickest way of getting around so much stuff. And that says the UV goes into there. I'm going to change that to texture. And that now leads into our displacement. So what I'm going to do is going to put a mix color node between these so mix RGB and drop that in there and that what that means is if I set this to if I set this on to the bottom one when it's on a factor of one which means the color two it's all there when it's on a zero it's gone look at that all gone all gone really nice so what you need to do now which you go oh, well that's great that's good now what I need to do is I need to have one for the other side as well don't I just go back to my object so let's go back to the object. Uh, let's lift up that, set that to one. And you'll notice that's creasing better. And I'll put that one also on one. So those are up there. I'm gonna take all of this and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Shift D and I'm gonna drag that. Here we go, I hate it when it does that. I'm now gonna drag this down. <laughs> if it pops below the window, it goes, boom, vanishes. Right, so there you go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm going to add another color mix RGB and this one now at the moment these are on mix and mix and this is also on mix I'm going to change this one to additive and I'm going to put this in color two and I'm going to put this in let's put that color into the height I'm going to put this into color one And I am going to, you'll notice that's all working together quite nicely. Yeah, there we go. And I'm going to change the mapping in this. If we go here, I'm going to change this. I'm going to scale this in the X by minus one. And now we have both of those in there. Now, here's the thing. If I pull this down, it gets rid of the right-hand one. If I pull this down, it gets rid of the left-hand one. So what that means is we can then drive these with these. And it's very simple. Values go from zero to one on these, and they do on those. So this is where that extra special little way of adjusting this will comes into place. So what you do is you right click on this and you go copy as new driver. You make sure you know which one it is. That's right eyebrow up. And this one is right eyebrow up. So you click on that and you go paste driver. That is now being driven by that value. So if I pull that down, the eyebrow goes down and the displacement goes down. 
if I push that a little bit, get, start to get a few creases, just a few creases. If we push it all the way to push it to one, lots of creases. So let's put that to 0.25. We're just starting to get them. Do you see? It's absolutely fantastic. So with the eyebrow. Now, that's all well and good. Let me just take the left eyebrow, do the same thing here. Let's do this. Copy as new driver, paste driver. And now we've got the same here as well. So the eyebrow is down. Yep, you'll notice it all looks a little bit inflated. There we go. So the factor down, right eyebrow up. Where's the other eyebrow? In the middle, please. There we go. So that's perfectly okay. So they are bang in the middle. We both get absolutely everything in exactly the way it should be, which is exactly what I wanted to see. Whew, that's lucky, isn't it? Now, let's do the same here. We can take this whole unit like this, this whole grouping, just like this. And I'm zoom, going to zoom out for my own sanity and go shifty and drop that down there. And now what we're going to do in these ones is we're going to very quickly change both of these. Right, so let's change this to LMT up. Now it's not the connector, so you can't see anything, and change this to LMT up. This, of course, is right, up, right one because it's scaled by minus one of the X. And what we're going to do is we're going to just get this to see what's happening, first of all, to make sure this is all going to work okay, even though I'm pretty sure it will. I'm going to click this color, whoops, this color, into the height. And now we can see these awfully badly painted creases. The person who did these is absolutely useless. And you'll notice that these factors are nice and clean and empty. There's no drivers running in there. So we're going to go left mouth up and we're going to go copy as new driver. And then we're going to here, we're going to go paste new driver. So there you go. And then the same here, right mouth up, copy as new driver to paste driver. There we go. So they're now gone. But if I push this up, there's your creases. Push this one up. There's your creases. Oh dear, they look horrible. Oh man, oh man, that's not nice, is it? I mean, it's fun functional. It's, it's really not very pretty. But the point is, the point is, it's, it's not about me making it look gorgeous, although I have to say that is pretty dire. I might have to go and repaint that one. I think I probably will at some point. No, I'll do it quickly now. Let's do it quickly now. Texture painting. Let's just, we can see them now. I'm going to put them up here. So let's, oh, no, that's not right. I'm going to set this to mix and that's fine. Let's get the strength up. And we want to make sure that color is 0.5. Did delete it like this. And we're going to, I'm going to paint all this out. So they is gone, baby. And let's go and get all the white value. And let's make this a lot smaller, of course. And let's very quickly go back to the shading and have a look at what was so bad about that before. Well, firstly, it's gone. Um, it needs to be, if I just pop the wireframe over the top, it's got to be up there. So that's uh, the one, two, three, third one down from the main ring. Texture paint, and we go one, two, three, third one up to here. In fact, I can see it here, can't I? So do that one like that, and then we'll do that one like that. And there'll be a little bit here. Okay. Uh, a little bit tidier. A little bit tidier. It's making silly noises. And then let's go here and go black and go and then and then obviously this is where I then obviously. I will take this brush and make it bigger and go. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, yeah. Definitely need this filtering off. Like this. And there. And these edge one this end these end further ones further out need to be even even more filtered. Even more. There we go. That that should look a bit that look a bit nicer, doesn't it? Yeah, that's better. So let's go image save, and there you go. So it's packed back into the memory image. We're back into the shading, and there you go. That looks better, doesn't it? Still not perfect. So that's okay because if you look at our stuff here, we now need to make sure these are all combined. So let's set that one to one. 
if we can see them all. And then let's take these two. These two mix RGB. There we go. That one there. And that one there. Come on. Move. I'll try zooming in a bit. There we go. That one there. And let's go add. We'll go color. And we got our mix RGB. Stick that there. Change this to additive. Color one. Oh, color two. Color two. And let's just swap those around. Bump. Not that it really matters. And drop that into there. And there now you can see every single one of them. And obviously, which is a nice thing. So you can see all the displacement there. And um, But if I go back into this mode, there we go. You'll notice also you can see them in here, which is an added bonus, really. So it does mean that when you actually do this in here, you can actually see them in shaded mode, in EV. But remember that you won't get to actually see them as displacement in EV. You'll only ever see them as bump. So, but you know, if you want to do it just that way, you can. But the speed, the actual speed of that. I mean, I know everyone. Everyone's a fanboy for EV. Everyone who uses it just goes, "Oh my god, oh my god, it's fantastic! Why, why have I never used it before? Where have you been all my life, EV?" Um, and there's other people who are starting to jump on board now. What a desk. Maxon. They're all trying. They're all trying. Uh, but basically, fundamentally, what you've just done there is you've created, um, uh, you know, uh, rig elements that you can animate. And at the same time, you'll be, as you're manipulating geometry, you're also manipulating texture maps. So you can use this, not just for this. I mean, this is the other thing. Keep this in mind. It looks like a moustache. Keep this in mind that for this is I'm using this right now just for manipulating um, the creases on a wrinkles on a very 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 bad wrinkles on a very bad face. But what you can actually do is, for example, if you've got a hydraulic and it's got like a leather thing over the top of it because it's kind of like steampunky kind of feel. When the hydraulic pushes up, when there's like there's a metal bit that's got this bit of leather in between, you can push those together, and as that pushes together, you can drive a displacement map, which then sort of like crinkles the skin of the leather so it looks like it's compressing i mean it's a nice way of doing stuff i mean and then also the other thing is which is actually quite nice and i'll show you this very quickly as well is this is just one part of one whole big deal particularly for a gaming character it's a lot easier to do it this way but still despite all of this here you've still got the ability to add another complete layer where is it and look for it. there you go another complete layer of bump mapping still to your object because you, despite the fact you got the displacement of that which also appears as bump you've also got this this normal here so i can go and add a bump node add a voronoi and i can take uh the distance stick it into the height stick the normal into the normal and wallop there you go whoa but it just let's just take the scale up Oh, and let's take the look to something even higher and then drop the strength down to 0.05. There you go. And let's change that to 250. And you're starting to get something which has, you know, you've still got kind of, I mean, again, it's a bit cheaty, but you've got like paws, you know, a little bit, a little bit, nothing amazing, but you've got some paws there. Paws for applause. Oh dear, I really have got to stop doing this. Never, never, ever, ever will I stop doing this. I love this more than I love cheese. And trust me, that is saying something. I may have had a beer before I started recording this one. <laughs> Only one. Come on, guys, in the UK, lockdown's getting better. It's not so locked down. It's more sort of like unlocked up a bit. So there you go. That is how you drive the... Um, that's how you drive displacements. And textures in you know blender i think i better go listen guys i hope this you've enjoyed this please subscribe um i am this stupid most of the time um i will not be editing this very heavily because i actually think it's gone quite well um, i may cut out a little bit here and there but um in all honesty it's great to do these i'm so glad to get some comments and it's just so nice to be able to help somebody and at the same time 
I get something out of it. I knew what I wanted to do. I've done it before in Maya. I've never done it in Blender. And then I managed to now do it in Blender. And here's the irony. And um, it isn't that ironic. It is so much faster in Blender than it is in Maya. Sorry, Autodesk. It is so much faster. Uh, words fail me. Anyway, that's enough for now. Please subscribe, as I've said. And I will keep on hammering that in. Subscribe. Um, come back for more. And anytime you need any help with anything, just let me know. This has been great. Uh, this has been Gary. And I'm now saying goodbye. Take care, guys. Look after yourselves. And bye. <laughs>